Y, y sí, ciertamente hubo momentos muy eh, tristes. Of course, the first few days were very hard, since it takes time to know what God's purpose is in a tribulation like this. And there were moments of great sadness, of being torn from the warmth of my family to the darkness of a prison cell. The prison cell was very narrow, two meters wide, with no windows or access to the outside world, and I had to share it with three other prisoners. At first, I did not have my glasses, so I couldn't read my Bible. My vision was blurry. Well, it was terrible, painful. Uh, my, my soul hurt. Sometimes uh, the pain was so strong that it was too difficult to keep going. However, I was sure that God was with me. When people from CSW came to visit me, I realized I was not alone. They encouraged me. Cuba's political campaign was to discredit the image of my ministry. Oh, it was incredible. It was comforting to know that someone was thinking of us and suffering with us. It was encouraging us a lot. Those visits gave me strength because there were times where we felt that we were nobody in our own country. Visits, letters, phone calls, they all encouraged us to keep going. I felt a huge relief in my heart, both then and now. I can guarantee you that I have never felt God's presence as strong as when I was in prison. I've done years of theological study, pastoral ministry, fasting, but I have never been so close to God as when I was in prison. There we weren't provided with water for personal hygiene, but God allowed the water from a tap from our prison cell, which could not be closed properly, and so we had a constant trickle of water. My experience in prison marked a significant positive change because you can know God in a theological way, but it is more through sorrow and hard times that you can know him personally. In prison, I saw the purpose of God revealed to me. I saw that God was in control of everything and that it was his plan for me to find myself in such difficult conditions. And as the days passed, I grew stronger in faith and I started to preach to several prisoners. I also witnessed how the guards were impacted by the testimonies and that they were open to receive the word of God. Well, firstly for me it was very significant. It really strengthened my faith because in prison I felt that my faith was being attacked and it made me feel alone. But suddenly I started to receive lots of letters from all over the world giving me encouragement. And they were from very remote countries such as Mongolia, Japan, Belgium, the Netherlands and also many letters from the United States, Brazil, Nicaragua and Italy. These are countries which I've never had contact with. Every one of these letters was like a drop of rain and blessing. They came from a far distance and each of them gave strength. 
I'm very grateful for all of them. These letters from Brazil impacted me as they were done by very young children who could barely write. They made them with their hands and encouraged me. And also it made me feel better when I found out that my daughters were being encouraged by other Christian children from other parts of the world. I will never forget this experience. Quiero darles gracias, gracias. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's like my husband said before, we left many things behind in Cuba, but these letters will accompany us everywhere we go and every time I see them, I will give thanks to God for each person who wrote them. Eh, me siento feliz y me siento triste. Me siento feliz porque I am happy and sad at the same time. I am happy because my daughters are growing up in a free nation, but I feel sad because I am an exile, expelled from my own country. To be honest, I still can't believe it. I'm in the process of adaptation, of leaving the past behind and starting a new life. I feel relieved and I'm very happy to be here. Good. I, like my mom, feel that it is a dream and I'll wake up very soon. I know that I have more than a thousand dreams which I can fulfill.